This happened when I was about 13 or 14, and was going back to school in September. I was on the Scholars, which is like a British school bus, although anyone can ride it. People started talking about what they had done during the summer when someone mentioned the man in the woods. Suddenly everyone was talking about it and throwing their theories around. Finally I got someone to explain what was going on. They told me that, allegedly, some young kids in the summer who were about eight or nine were playing in the woods when some man dressed as a bush, they said, physically attacked them with a stick or something and threw them down the valley into the woods, which I can tell you is a pretty big drop. One of the kids told his mother, and she walked through the woods to see what was going on, and the same thing happened to her. Over the summer, this went on to happen to about five or six people, always women walking dogs or with their kids. I didn't believe a word of this and called shenanigans, but this went on for another month or so. One day, the Scholars was about to pull away from the bus stop when this one kid who always got on the bus was missing. I heard someone on the bus shout for the driver to wait, and we all looked out the back window and here comes the kid running from the woods with some guy in what looked like a full ghillie suit chasing after him, holding what looked like a nightstick. Honestly, it was surreal. They eventually caught the guy. Some men used one of their kids as bait to lure him out and then beat the tar out of him. It turned out he was some Kosovan refugee. I don't think he even got jailed for it, though. It was literally mentioned once in the paper, and then completely memory hold around here. I've mentioned it to people, and they do remember, but they always say the same thing. I had forgotten all about that. For some reason, I always need to be reminded of it. This doesn't involve ghosts, but I was terrorized once for weeks by people trying to break into my house. I'm a 25-year-old female, not trying to be special, I just think that makes it scarier, and lived alone with a puppy. I have a tall wall, maybe 9 feet, around my house, with a gate that I keep locked on the inside at night. So, first incident. I was asleep in my living room and I woke up to a scraping sound. The sound was instantly familiar because my house is on the main route to the high school and kids will often scrape the wall as they pass it with bottles or whatever they found on the ground. I sat bolt upright, just in time to catch a glimpse of this guy going over the top of my wall as he exited the property. I was up all night, totally paranoid and noping out since I had no idea how long he was in the yard, peeking in my windows or whatever. Nothing from the yard was stolen. After that, I decided to leave my puppy outside at night so he could guard the place. Two or three days later, I went out in the morning after a peaceful night. My puppy was gone. The gate that was locked from the inside was wide open. I took a walk around the neighborhood, made some calls, and no one had seen him. I got to work and came home and he was still gone. I was sitting outside on the street talking to my neighbors about 9 p.m. when he came back. To this day, even after all that happened after, I'm not sure what to make of that incident. Why didn't he bark? If someone had broken in, why not just kill the dog? And how did he make it back? He had never left the yard before. This is also the only time they came and left through the front gate. In any case, I took the hint and started keeping the dog inside at night again. Over the next ten days or so, I woke up maybe six mornings to evidence that someone had been in my yard. My clothesline was cut and wedged in the top of my wall. Pieces of rebar that I used in my garden had been taken and coiled to make a little step. Trash like beer bottle caps and food wrappers appeared all over the lawn and I wasn't sleeping well so I woke up in the night totally paranoid and panicking. Sometimes I'd hear scuffling and walking noises outside. I started sleeping with a weapon and a flashlight. I started sleeping in my kitchen since I figured he'd be most likely to try to get through the bedroom or the living room. I got my neighbor to fix my outdoor porch light, but except for that first incident, I was never able to catch a glimpse of the person. 
even after I found the screen to my kitchen window completely shredded up. It was probably done at night, since I didn't check it in the morning. I didn't notice until the following evening when I was making dinner. I noped right out of there and spent the night with a friend. This next part is kind of stupid, but me and a friend conducted a little investigation that basically revolved around asking people in the neighborhood if they'd seen or heard anything. They hadn't. Then we set up a trap where we put my nice bike on the porch, hoping that would lure him under the light where we would then take his picture or mace him or something. We stayed up all night, but nothing happened. The very next night after our little plot failed, I was woken up by a super loud bang, and the dog started going crazy. There was someone on the roof. They were not being subtle at all, stomping and banging and scratching. I thought this is it, so I gathered all my courage, and my machete, and unlocked the door and went out into the front yard. I had a whistle that I was blowing like a moron. He was on the other side of the peak from me, and I could only see his head and shoulders. He faced me and started to climb the peak of the house. I had the nope of the century. I ran out of my gate and into the street, blowing my whistle until someone came, leaving the house wide open. After a few minutes, a little search party had formed, ready to go into the house, but no one was there. I spent the night with a neighbor, and the night after, someone spent the night with me at my house. The third night I tried to spend alone, but I was feeling paranoid, and I decided to bail around midnight to stay with my friend. I came home from work the next day, and found that one of my ceiling tiles was displaced. Believe it or not, I lived in that house for another year and a half. I never had any more problems, though a few months after that my dog died. It was some kind of stomach issue. I'm still a bit affected by it, psychologically. I was working at a place that makes pallets. Everything was done outside so as to avoid fires. There was some guy that would always come around selling sandwiches. They were cheap, but I never bought any since I always brought my own lunch. There are lots of stray animals that hang around the area. You can probably see where this is going, but I'll continue. There's a stray dog that hangs around the work area to get scraps and belly rubs. One day, this guy comes by selling his sandwiches and he sees the dog and asks if he can buy it. Somebody asks him why he would want to buy a stray dog, and I swear, the guy just says to make more sandwiches. A couple of co-workers yelled at him, and he never came back. You would be shocked at the number of people who just eat animals off the street in Florida. The people who lived down the street from us tried to steal our dog and got kicked in by my dad. The police found a bunch of butchered animals in the ditch behind their house that had clearly been partially eaten. I was just leaving Tim Hortons at around 11 p.m., so it was fairly dark out. I'm walking down the street when a very old lady with gray hair and really odd clothing comes up to the window of the Tim Hortons. All of the walls around the Tim Hortons are mostly glass, so you can easily see inside. She's staring at a man right next to the window inside the store, and she looks at me and says, He deserves it. And she makes a motion like she's punching his head through the glass, and then like she ripped his head off. And she continues walking down the street with her hand extended out like she's holding a head. And I kind of laugh to myself because this is incredibly silly and odd, and she walks around the corner. Now, I'm not even a second behind her, and I pass the corner and I look into the alley where she would have walked into, and no one was there. Curiosity got the best of me, so I did a little walk around the Tim Hortons to see if I could see her anywhere, and no, she had vanished. I look back into the store, and the guy's on the ground, and there's people around him on their phones. I decided to stay to see if they had a reason for his death. They said they had no clue, he just talked about pain in his chest and fell down. I've seen this lady multiple times in my town. 
She's always in the same alleyway, sitting down. I never saw her leave the spot until then. Is she the Grim Reaper or something? <laughs>